Hello, this is Gourmet on a Budget. I'm Martin and it is really my pleasure to introduce interesting dishes actually you can make easily at home. For two or more people using ingredients you find more readily cooked at home. Enhanced by a fascinating biblical perspective and tidbits about the meaning of a word or an ingredient or a step of the process. So we can immerse ourselves into cooking experience better and gain special insight that makes it easier to appreciate the dish, the activity, and its significance. Today, I want to share my version of a famous French comfort food recipe, which is coq au vin, or chicken cooked with wine. Sounds difficult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, no, it's not that difficult. It's just, again, it's, it's a very famous French recipe. Okay. We respect the cooking process. We use fresh ingredients and the right ingredients. It takes a little bit time. We actually, it will uh, have more steps than maybe other uh, recipes, but uh, it has nice selection of flavors and spices, and as well the main ingredients, which is wine. The wine in Kokova serves two purposes actually. It's not only adds to the depth of flavor of the dish, but also a little bit of acidity in the wine helps to tenderize actually the meat chicken, which we never have today. Kokova is a very uh, close cousin to the beef of Bourguignon, so there is a bit of slow cooking, so that will take a little bit time, mm -hmm. but it involves uh, an achievement, what I call fall of the bone tenderness, uh -huh. which is very important. Hmm. So, Father Joel, isn't wine an important part of Jewish life in the good book also? After all, the Lord's first miracle was turning water into wine. Yeah, it's very much part of their culture, absolutely. And uh, let's begin with what you have said, uh, the, this, uh, the first miracle of Jesus, as recorded in the Gospel of John, he calls them signs. The first of the signs, uh, John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. That's the miracle at Cana. And uh, there was one part, it was a wedding, and of course there should be wine. The mother of Jesus was there together with Jesus and uh, his disciples. And then uh, the mother of Jesus told him, they have no more wine. Wow, that would be a shame. And so. That's uh, the miracle is about uh, turning water into wine. Uh, it shows to us that it's so important to have wine in, uh, in, their, in these festivities, even daily. Okay? And then in sacrifices also, there's what we call the libation. They pour out the wine in, to offer it to the Lord. And uh, sometimes they do drink this fermented wine. And then finally, uh, this, uh, the wine is drunk at the Passover meals. In fact, four cups of wine from the beginning to the end. And uh, that somehow was, is the root of the Eucharist. And the, in the Eucharist, in the Holy Mass that we celebrate, we cannot use any other beverage for the wine, but except wine that will be turned into the blood of Christ. That's for the Holy Mass. Wow. So I never realized that, actually, Father. Oh so, I, you know, I'm a big fan of, of Jesus because, yeah, mm -hmm. to make water into wine. Yeah. Let's have wine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, uh, Chef. Uh, just like we don't always realize how much work goes into the delightful dish like uh, coca vam. And uh, please show us how it is done by so first beginning. Cheers. Yes. So With we have cheers. this so wine. Exciting. Yes, so cheers. Okay. So, we have mm, ingredients. Nice. Good. It's nice, no? Yeah. It's nice from Bordeaux, the wine, which are nice oh, Bordeaux, red wine. Okay. It's nice fruity acidity, which we need actually for and the And it's nice that we have chicken. this insight from Father, so we appreciate it better Even more. Also, yeah. Even more. <laughs> so, we have chicken. I have a quarter of a chicken. I have the, the legs. I have some bacon. I have some Canadian bacon here. Onion, garlic, carrots, some mushrooms, red onions, some tomato paste. Then I have, for the mashed potato, I make the mashed potato. Uh, as a siding for the cocova. So I have potato, I have milk, I have a little bit nutmeg, and I have some butter to it later on mix it. So the first what we need to do is basically put the chicken into the, the, the oven. So what we need to do is we have to sear it. And before we sear it, we need a little bit the fat of the bacon, which is very important. Wow. Now every chef cooks the cocova a little bit different in that sense. Some you smoke bacon, some uh, use different kinds of mushroom, different kinds of wine. But the most important thing is that we have a nice fruity wine with acidity. 
so to give this a nice flavor. So we don't add actually anything else, we just cook the chicken in wine, which is beautiful. Okay. Excuse me, so I have to go over here. So we turn on the heat here and over there. So the bacon, we're gonna fry a little bit, but also we have to make the mashed potato. So I have two big potatoes, which we just chunk up into big pieces, which we're gonna boil. And then we mash them and basically put them there. So we just place them here in the water. They can cook by themselves. They don't need any help. And of course we have to put some in. In the other pan, we add olive oil. And you see, and I take a pan which has a griddle a little bit so I can nicely roast it actually. I can nicely roast whatever. Mm. So over here, heat that up and I add my bacon. So I just want to fry my bacon a little bit. It's also nice to get a little bit crispy. Mm -hmm. I render a little bit the fat, which is the nice when I pan fry my, my chicken. So here as well, salt, pepper, around so each side so I just took a, a chicken quarter the leg part because I like the leg part it's much more juicier it takes about 45 minutes to cook these parts voilà. so here I render a little bit the fat okay. chef we would be using wine in this uh, dish that we will be preparing right Yes. Is it the same wine that you gave us? Yes. Today? It smells amazing, Chef. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's always nice when you have the wine you drink, which also the wine you actually use for cooking. Okay. But it can really get expensive. Uh -huh. Because wine, you can buy different classification. So it's really, if you have a wine which may cost 2,000 pesos, mm -hmm. is it really worth it to cook the dish in it? Mm, okay. So you might want to go for a cheaper version. Cheaper version. But as much as possible, try to take the same wine, the classification, the same grape. If you take a Merlot, yes. use Merlot. If you have a more cheaper Merlot than an expensive mm -hmm. Merlot, but use the same grape variety. Okay. So you've also the flavor there. Mm -hmm. So you see, we roast them a little bit. Voila. So we use the onions. We also use a little bit carrots okay. to give a little bit body to our, to our stew. So this doesn't have to be that all the same size, mm -hmm. uh, because later on when the sauce is finished, we strain that and we actually don't use them anymore. Mm. So we only use this to cook the, the sauce in it. So you see, it's nicely seared. So now we put this a little bit on the side. We have a nice big pan. And then the we chicken. add our chicken. So now important is, that we sear the chicken and we give it some nice color. Because also the coloration, it's caramelized. Mm -hmm. And that's very important for the flavor later on in our cocoa. The bacon is fine, so I'll take this out. So. Oh, my, my popcorn. <laughs> <transfer here. laughs> okay. yeah, it, has to, it has to be hot, right, because it has to sear. So the beauty about this pan, I have mm -hmm. now space here, mm -hmm. which I can add actually. Ah, okay. Great. So I can save a little bit time. Right. I don't have to wait till my chicken is seared completely. Once you have the flavor of the bacon already there, and also. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this takes a little bit time. Then we have mushrooms. Okay. Which we're gonna cook later on. So we just cut them into quarters. So it different sizes. Mm -hmm. We have red onions, which we cut into wedges. A little bit uh, tomato paste. Later on, we have to make a roux. A roux is a combination of, of butter and, and flour, mm -hmm. which okay. will thicken the sauce later mm -hmm. on a little bit. So when it's nicely seared, we add this is our pan. Uh -huh. wow. And then we still have the vegetable here which we boil as well. And it is okay if it has a little bit coloration. Then we need some wine. Today we use Chateau Boutarier from mm -hmm. Bordeaux, which is a very 
Very nice wine. It's an entry level of Porto, which is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Nice body, nice, easy to drink as well as you taste, right? So you see, we get a little bit coloration now. Then we take oh, yeah. tomato paste. And also important is when we add tomato paste, we also roast it a little bit. I always find that tomato paste has this, when you get it out of the can, this canny flavor. Ah, yes. mm. So yeah. when you roast it for two or three minutes, it actually goes away. Okay. And also a little bit of the acidity which it has. Voila. And now comes the nice part. We add the red wine. And Ooh. we nicely deglaze it. And as you can see, that's the alcohol, which flames. And then we take that, and we add this here inside. So, now we don't have enough wine, so we <laughs> fill it up with wine. So let's be generous, right? We want to have a nice wine sauce. And I'm sure we still have more for drinking later. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we, we could stretch it with a little bit stock or whatever, but again, you want mm -hmm. to have something nicely. So. so this one will now be bring it to boil. I will also add a little bit herbs. So I go to my herb garden and I get a little bit thyme, a little thyme. bit oregano. Mm -hmm. Some will add that a little bit of rosemary inside. Again, it's up to the chef to add what he likes to do. How long do, do we just wait for it here? Uh, this one goes now into the oven. Oh, okay. And for about 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then we take it out and then we add some other component. Voila. So, potatoes. Mm -hmm. How do we know the potatoes are cooked? Take a knife, go in. Yeah. If the potato basically falls down, huh? that's, so that's basically cooked. cooked huh? So mm -hmm. it's nicely cooked. So we take a strainer, apply of the water, put the potato back. Now I just let them rest for about five minutes so they can evaporate a little bit and the steam will go off. So very important, this one is just melted. Mm -hmm. And we take the same amount of butter as flour. We don't melt it, we don't want any coloration, we just melt it, add the flour inside and then we mix this up and it becomes like a paste. So, take the spatula. Voila, take this out. I love the smell of butter. Yep. <sighs> There's a nice nutty flavor, yeah. right, which is nice. So when this, the pan is clear, we take the, clear, the same pan. Mm -hmm. Again, some butter in it. Melt it. We add the onions. Ah, so we put all of this together mm. and then we add it to uh, the yep. chicken. Except the mashed potato. Salt a little bit, no coloration. We add the mushroom. <laughs> we want that this all comes together nicely. So The color is really pretty. On the side and that's it. Mm. So our potato potatoes. has a little bit evaporated. <laughs> we have this beautiful machine here. Wow, what is that? This is a Mash. mashed potato. <laughs> So fancy, I've always just done it with a fork. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways how you can do it. This yes. is certainly an easy way. And you find this in Gordos. So thank you very much and uh, keep it coming. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gordos. But, yeah, that's a really nice tool. So, so we just add this here inside. That's great, now I want to buy one. <laughs> you know, a lot of tools are very handy and yeah, it helps so much, right? So just take this, wow. squeeze it out. Oh. You see. Have mashed potatoes every day. <laughs> <laughs> so mashed potato, what we need for mashed potato is milk. Mm -hmm. So we add in the same pan a little bit milk. So we bring this to boil. Voila. And then we add the mashed potato. Mashed potatoes. See, we mix that up. Mix that with a little bit. Add a little bit. Nutmeg. What does the nutmeg, nutmeg do? Just a nutty flavor. I've nutmeg never had mashed potato with nutmeg. Uh -huh. It's just a, so this nice to try it. nutty flavor. And to make it a little bit buttery, we add a notch of butter. 
And then, which the beauty about this is now, we can leave this on the side. And now we're going to take the chicken out. Chicken came out, so we'll take this, open this up. You can see, right? Oh. Nicely reduced a little bit. The color is beautiful. And the chicken also got actually, you see, some colors. Mm -hmm. So we take the chicken out. Mm -hmm. It's almost cooked. Take this out. Now what we do, we take the sauce and we strain it. It's like I mentioned, I don't like the carrots and the onions and all of these things anymore. I'll strain that. We put back in the same pan. And, and then put it on the heat. And we add this roux inside. Uh -huh. And mix it up. Oh. And I add the mushrooms, mushrooms and all of the other components. Add this here inside. Stir it. And then I add my chick chicken. back. Oh, put it back in. Yeah. And then back in the oven again. <laughs> so this one, place back in the oven again. For the next 10 minutes, I have as well a little bit parsley. Parsley. The little bit chives, which we can put on top. That's really up to us. So I place this here as well. So for us later on to use that. And just to make it stick up. Voila. So, 10 minutes, 10 minutes is long. Yes, 10 minutes. not too long for a while. So, we just... <laughs> mm. So, our chicken. I'm excited. It's finished. Ooh. Oh my goodness, that looks beautiful. As you can see. So, see the color of wine. Yeah, that color yes. is amazing. Yeah. Nicely red color. So, here we're finished. So, we have a plate. Nice and blue. Yeah, I thought we have a little Contrast. bit nicely <laughs> contrasting plates with our garnish here. And then, and then we just add some mashed potato here. I open it up a little bit here. And also make this one here. Oops. Take another one. It doesn't have to look perfect. It's a mashed potato, it's a little bit farmer, it's, it's farmer style, right? Mm -hmm. Which is nice. So. Your favorite tool. Yeah. <laughs> so we take this chicken here. Then the legs we put on top. And look at this vibrant color. color yeah. huh? it around. If you have your in-laws coming by, right, and you want to impress that. You that just would, double yeah. the recipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we take our garnish and just place this as well. And mushroom, the mushroom, you know, those are raw, right? They are not mm -hmm. cooked. Raw mushroom is actually nice to eat. So there's nothing wrong with having raw mushroom as a decoration on your plate. And with the chives, just put it in. Off we go. Wow. Right. And then you send this to out. And that's it. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Right. Beautiful. A leaf, right? It's yes. a very farmer's meal with a nice leaf. Mm -hmm. Beautiful presentation with some plates, actually. It's nice you can play around with the plates. Yeah. It doesn't have to be always a white plate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we finished the dish. Mm -hmm. The sauce is there. We have the wine. You might want to try. Okay. Let's try it. <laughs> So, cheers. <laughs> cheers. And, oh, mm. thank, thank you. Tony, please, and let's, uh. let's try. Let's try how it came out. Let's go. Uh, 
so good. <laughs> Tastes amazing. It does. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get another bite. <laughs> no, it's really something which you which you can really do at home, and and uh, it, it doesn't cost that much. It just takes a little bit time and a little bit love, mm -hmm. and and uh, you can turn a simple ingredients into something really very meaningful. How much would mm. um, this cost for two people? Two people about uh, 400 pesos. Mm. Is that 400 divided by two? Yes. So, you can eat some more. That's quite reasonable for an international recipe. Mm. This is great. <laughs> I'm so happy that actually you, you know, I, uh, you enjoy my cooking. Yeah, please let's it. all try doing this at home. You can download the recipe on our website, and we hope you like and subscribe to our video on YouTube. And watch out for trailers on our IG stories. After all, it's recipes like these that make gourmet on a budget. Where the difference is divine. And understanding a little more about the word wine enhances your total experience. I'd like to quote from my namesake, the prophet, <laughs> Prophet Joel, chapter 3, verse 18. And uh, what happens on the day of the Lord? And therefore, it's uh, something that we can hope for. And I'd like to quote this from, from that book. And in that day, the mountains shall drip sweet wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the stream beds of Judah shall flow with water, and a fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord, the water, the valley of Shittim. That hope that we have in getting a better world, the, the analogy that is given is that there will be delicious wine for all of us. And God bless you all. Okay, super. Thank you, thank so you much. Father. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much, Father. We thank really you. appreciate it. We appreciate uh, <laughs> Chef Martin. This is wonderful. Good. Right. Happiness. Yes. Food and drinks, happiness. Food and drinks. I'm going to get some more because it's very I forgot to say food.